Uh, yeah, I'm going to just talk a bit about um, heat pumps and heat pump monitoring. Um, I recently got a heat pump installed at home. Um, uh, it's uh, for anyone who doesn't know what heat pumps are, they're a heating system, a bit like air conditioners, but running backwards. So you use electricity to um, basically move heat from outside into the in, in, into your house. Um, so let's see if I can get this on full screen. Okay, this is <coughs> I've worked on this with uh, John Cantor, who's uh, an expert on heat pumps. Um, he's based in Machentjev. He's been working with this technology for um, probably several decades now. Um, he's written books on it uh, and um, is a consultant. And um, yeah, he really knows these things inside out. And I've been working with him for a while on monitoring heat pumps. Um, so I've seen, um, I've seen. Uh, so data on, I mean, there's a lot of um, discussion about some of them not working very well, and uh, or there's there's a lot of uh, um, well-known cases in the UK where they've been installed incorrectly, uh, and and so there's sort of discussion about you know what role do they have in in the future energy system, and uh, but at the same time I've seen good data from his heat pump, so I've been encouraged to um, uh, you know look at this technology closer, as it were. So well, I first got interested in heat pumps after reading uh, Z um, well, Sustainable Energy Without the Hot Air from David McKay. And he highlights heat pumps as a, as a key technology for using renewable electricity to provide heating, so uh, for as a way for us to get off fossil fuels. Um, but uh, Zero Carbon Britain is a, is a scenario, of probably one of the more thorough scenarios that, are, that is available for uh, decarbonisation of um, uh, UK energy supply and uh, how we can, well, how we can uh, provide our heating, our transport demands, and normal electricity demands, all from renewable electricity. Um, I mean, they've really put a lot of work into this. There's some really detailed energy modelling behind this, um, which they've, uh, which I helped them last year to open source. And we, we, um, uh, it's now. There's, there's a version of this. I've been doing some work with them on uh, producing uh, like an, an online 10-year um, uh, hourly energy model that's based on their original model, but it's not quite the same. Uh, and you can explore it in your browser. Um, but essentially, uh, they, if, if you look at space heating use in the UK now, it's about 34 kilowatt hours per day uh, per household. Um, and Zero Carbon Britain reduces this to 4.2 kilowatt hours per day electrical input. And they do, they do this by, you insulate houses up to a very high standard and then you have a heat pump uh, which um, uses electricity to produce the remaining heat. And uh, overall it's an 83% energy saving. So it's, it's uh, I'm, I'm interested in the integration of all these technologies. How do you then power those heat pumps from wind energy or, so, or solar? And how do, you, you know, how do you ensure that those, your, your variable renewable energy supply matches your demands? So, so this is where I live at the moment in North Wales. It's a, it's a small cottage. A sm um, it's, it's by no means a low energy building. Um, but uh, I had been heating it with uh, a wood stove and electric heating, uh, direct electric heating, and it, it was a pretty uncomfortable place to be in the winter. Um, and so in the long term, I want to, I'd like to live in a, a highly insulated building, and I'd love to build something. But at, at this point, I needed just to get a heating system so I could get through the next winter. Um, so I put in this, this heat pump with, with John Cantor's help. Um, and uh, set about monitoring it and really getting an, a good understanding for how it works. Um, so I did so I did some modelling beforehand to work out how much uh, heating energy I'd need. I used a, um, a, a tool I'd been building with, with Carbon Corp in Manchester to uh, model how much heat the building would need, so uh, based on SAP. Um, so I, I predicted I'd need about 6.7 kilowatt hours per day to keep it at the, at the SAP design temperature of 21 degrees. I mean, I'd, 
don't keep it at 21 degrees for the same amount of time, so I don't actually use this. But this is a, a picture of the, the heat pump at the back. So it's a Mitsubishi Air Source uh, Ecodan, uh, five kilowatt output. Um, it's the, the, the system I've installed is quite simple. Essentially, there's because it's this old cottage, it's kind of like one main room. There's two radiators on inside. One is a standard convec convector. The other is a, a smart rad fan assisted uh, radiator. Um, you've got the, the flow and um, you've got the pipes coming in from the heat pump through the little for the co through the corner. It goes through. Um, there's a pump expansion vessel, um, a heat meter. Um, I think this. Uh, and that's pretty much the extent of the system. So it's quite a simple setup. Um, and then I've added uh, monitoring to this to be able to see what it's doing. So, so I guess the, he the headline figures from, <laughs> I've had it installed now from October 17th uh, last year. Uh, so it's 113 days in this particular, t up to the point I finished this test. Um, I've used 413 kilowatt hours of electricity input, and it's provided 1,405 kilowatt hours of heat output. Um, so that's a COP of 3.4, which I'm, I'm pretty happy about because um, there's lots of stories of heat, heat pumps getting you know much worse results than this, and this kind of validates that y you can you know you can get it to work. And I didn't have to go to an e extraordinarily um, comp you know. It, it, it was it's a relatively simple system, not perfect by any means, and it's still getting good good results. Um, at a COP of 3.4, um, it, it, if you use electricity from the grid from the st with standard grid intensity, um, it is equivalent of um, 151 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour, the heat delivered into the, into the room which compares quite well with gas heating, which is around 230. So you're, you're making a saving already just with standard grid electric. Um, the, we've, we've been monitoring uh, the, grid CO, the grid CO2 intensity over the last few months, and it's actually lower than this figure that's often quoted. Um, and so at that, it's even lower, it's at 94. So you, you, it's potentially a large saving, even with the existing grid, which is not a, a you know, it is not, um, I mean, there's, there's an hugely, well, we get, we've got a, quite, um, a lot more renewable energy than we did have a few years ago, but it's still not uh, the larger share. Um, so to do this monitoring, um, I've, um, I've been developing a open hardware heat pump monitor, which is, is this board in the, in the corner here. Um, and it has, it's a, an Arduino or well, an AppMega 328 in the, in, in the center. It's got an MBUS reader. Um, it's got um, CT-based uh, uh, power monitoring, electricity monitoring, pulse counting, temperature sensing, and then it's got the, the ESP2866 Wi-Fi chip on there. Um, so it's quite a versatile board. You could use it for other things. You could use it for uh, monitoring the heat output from a gas boiler. Um, but it, I guess it's we, we've developed it with heat pump monitoring in mind here. Um, this is all open hardware, open source. It's all on GitHub on that link there. Um, so I've been so with this, I've been monitoring the electricity input in watts, total electricity input in kilowatt hours over the test period heat output, power in watts, heat, total heat output, outside temperature, room temperature, flow, return. Yep, that's the, those are the main ones. This is, ca this is an example of the kind of graphing we do, um, we're able to do with that data. This is like one, heat, one heating run. So um, the blue here is the electrical input and the, the yellow is the heat output. These are the flow temperatures up here, flow and return. Um, so you can, you can zoom in on a particular heating uh, period, and you can, you can look at the COP that was measured. So the, the, the COP is the coefficient of performance, which is the crucial thing. 
Um, so it's how many, how many units of heat did you get out for every unit of electricity you put in. So in this particular example, I had 3.54 units of heat output uh, for every uh, unit of electricity I put in. And uh, you can compare it to what it should do theoretically and um, with this Carnot um, efficiency uh, um, equation. And um, it, was, it, was it was good to see that it matched up to what was expected. Um, I guess that's when you do this kind of monitoring, that's always the thing that you're asking is you have models or you have something that you've read and you want to see that when you've actually put this technology in, is it working as uh, my understanding of it um, you know, says it should work? Especially if I spend a lot of time doing modeling and then I'm telling people about models, I want to know that if you do put the, in the kit in, it works as I expect it to. So um, that's... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, time, so. All right, okay. Um, how much time have you got? Um, probably, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do a couple okay, of minutes. You and me is after that. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, which only Ken and I are going to speak afterwards, so... Yeah, you know, we, we really want some time to... Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. So I don't think there's, that, there's not much to it. There's not much more. I'll... Uh, how, how much longer do you want to carry on with this? Uh, five minutes? Is that? <laughs> um, okay, so I mean, these are just some graphs of uh, sort of system properties, flow temperatures. Um, these are all useful to understand how well the system's working. Um, this is perhaps one of the more interesting aspects, which is the, the matching between um, we bring in real time data from grid CO2 intensity and real time data from wind, wind, pa uh, wind output, and then um, Explore, uh, look at what is the degree of matching between the supply and the demand and the heat pump demand over that period. Um, so I've recorded with this particular, with this heat pump, 35% supply demand matching, which is not particularly high. Um, the modeling suggests that you should be able to achieve about 57%, um, but that, there's a lot of reasons for that. I won't go into it now, but. This is a good base point for, thing, for me to then improve on it over time and hopefully be able to demonstrate um, higher matching in the future. So yeah, the next step is we make this is like an open, open initiative for anyone who has heat pumps and they want to see this kind of data for their own houses, uh, for their own systems. Uh, we want to try and explore a way of maybe having a league table where you can compare these kind of headline figures and, and see, you know, is there certain configurations that will achieve higher performance, higher matching? Um, and explore con different control strategies for turning the heat pump on, heating hot water when the grid CO2 is low or when there's high wind output. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the next step. Thanks for listening. <laughs>